Okay, so what we got here is Hannibal Helmerto. Is this is this your real name? Is it? Mm -hmm. Or is this your story? My real name got lost in the middle of house fire. <laughs> we were in um, Munich with the Circus of Horrors for a month. And he was working there in Munich, uh, I, I, believe it or not, working in the tax office. He had no tattoos, no piercings, he looked like a dead ordinary guy. Then we didn't see him for 10 years. 10 years later we turned up at Hackney Empire, he turned up as well, watched the show, and then afterwards came and introduced himself. You know, and he completely transformed his body, as you can see. Um, he's got more ink on the outside of his body than blood running within. His ears are forever elongated, look like a Guhu tribe from Africa. If you look inside his mouth, he's got a forked tongue, forever forked, actually done by a laser because um, if you actually cut your tongue, it's one of the easiest things to heal and now he's recognised as one of the greatest sword swallowers in the world. Well, I've seen uh, sword swallowing years ago um, before and I've, I always was attracted to everything that's bizarre, unusual and yeah, so that's the first time I've seen it and um, I've got interest in it and later when I've seen the circus of horrors, that was absolutely my cup of tea. The first sword he's going to swallow to prove to you that sword swallowing is genuine hasn't got a handle. So he'll take this one, he'll place this in his mouth, he'll force it down his throat past his lungs, um, and then uh, you know, he's hot way to sword swallowing this one. A nice straight line, down the throat it goes, and there it is. So, over the years I tried to combine two things, learn and act, and obviously that had to be thought swelling because I loved it the first time I'd seen it, and to be part of the circus of horror, so that's how I came up with it. We quaintly call the sword of the serpent, because of its bizarre shape, and it's the only sword swallow in the world who can swallow this type of sword. And the way he learned to do it, or the way he taught himself to do it, was having the top two ribs broken. And the, it's called in the sideshow trade floating ribs. It's another type of body modification. But it's, it's no harm to him because you don't need the amount of ribs. A lot of sword swallowing like this is about um, knowing your own body. So in fact, you can swallow this unique Shelly sword. You could hear that clunking against his teeth and against the rib as he goes down. Now, you yourself had a bad accident three years ago. Didn't it put you off? Well, I had to stop for a little while, but it was more for medical reasons. If that's what you love doing and that's what you're into, you want to do it again. It's like if you get hit by a car, you don't decide I'm going to stay home for the rest of my life. You have to go out and do it again or, you know, it will never happen ever again. The mother of all swords. It's three foot six inches long and it's made of solid steel. Now this one will go straight down his throat. And there's various techniques and various ways you can do it, but a common way is to do it with a coat hanger. Well, no one has to take it up. Um, the thing is, um, it would be a shame if such an old art form would die out. And as uh, Dr. Hayes said earlier, there's less than a hundred sword swallows in the sword swallows in the whole world. So um, it would be nice if that just, you know, keeps going. And um, it would be a shame if it just dies out.